live in a modern world where we have innovated ourselves and the technology that we live with. But have you ever questioned the fact as to how modern have we become, as to what extent we have reached? So for that, let's look into a video. As you can see, this is one of your favorite beverages that you consume, right? Now, have you ever thought about the fact that where are these produced? You can see that these are produced in mega factories where, you know, uh, human labor is not required to produce the finished product. We can see how without human labor, uh, products are being produced uh, in a mega scale with the machinery and they are then being supplied to the markets. So we therefore have become a world, a modern world that has, uh, you know, incorporated machinery and technology to an extent where after a point of time, human labor might just be uh, replaced by AIs, which is intelligence, artificial intelligence, as well as robots. And this is not unknown. There are, you know, places that are already incorporating robots into the structure of production and various mechanizations. So we see that human labor or, uh, you know, labor uh, that is human intensive is being now uh, sort of removed or replaced. But have you ever questioned the fact as to where this idea popped up from, where this idea to make uh, machine production the primary production or the production that supports the markets, where did this idea come from? For that, we will have to go back to the 18th century, which is called the period of industrial revolution. Now, can you tell me what exactly was happening before 18th century? That's right. If your answer is the Renaissance and Reformation, you're absolutely correct. So we see that Reformation and Renaissance and the ideals that it produced, it brought in a very vibrant sort of atmosphere in Europe. So the vibrant European atmosphere was filled with these new ideas of Renaissance and Reformation. We see that at this point of time, the curiosity um, of the individuals, the curiosity, the spirit of inquiry that was built in the individuals led to these sort of new innovations and experimentations to take place in the society. Now, we are also aware of the fact that, uh, you know, Renaissance happened because of the humanistic ideas. So we see that uh, humanism and the humanistic ideas, which were based on logic and rational thinking gave rise to the period of Renaissance. So humanistic ideas, therefore, was the base of the Renaissance ideas. And when Renaissance happened after, uh, you know, the point of time when experimentations and um, observations are taking place and the society is, uh, you know, has developed this air of scientific thought that gave rise to the era of enlightenment. So we see that Renaissance was transformed into the era of enlightenment that primarily was dependent upon human agency and new learnings. Now ne these new learnings were of course being achieved only by experimentation and observation. Therefore, we see that, you know, these experiments are taking place and simultaneously the age of Renaissance is now moving towards two primary sort of eras, two primary sort of phases, okay? So the first phase 
was that of the scientific revolution, the revolutionary path breaking changes that came after, you know, scientists uh, and people like that of Copernicus, Newton, Galileo, uh, they presented their research in the fields of science. And as we discussed was the enlightenment. Now, Renaissance, uh, you know, awakened the process of learning, right? Now, when we come to scientific revolution, we see they are again rethinking about their surroundings, about their universe, which is of course coming from the fact that people are learning more. And when we come to the enlightenment phase, we see that, you know, these answers, these questions that arise during the scientific revolution are being answered during the enlightenment period. The process of experimentation and observations continued and we see that, uh, you know, in the great era of scientific revolution, as we discussed, minds like Isaac Newton and Nicholas Copernicus were bringing changes, path breaking changes in the um, arena of science through experimentations and observations. Now, as these, uh, you know, continued and these processes went ahead, we see that the society reached a point of time which happened to be a break. Now, what was this break? This break happened after almost two centuries from that of Renaissance and Reformation around 1760 AD when the society went through a, a period of technological innovation, okay? So, it was a series of technological innovations that the society was going through. And these technological innovations were of course taking place in Europe, but where in Europe? It was taking place in Britain. As we have learnt about the fact that, um, you know, technological innovation or scientific innovations rather, um, this started from, uh, let's say, Re Renaissance and Reformation itself because, uh, you know, people were trying to revolutionize the way society was already existing in. So, printing press, as we saw, had revolutionized the society um, essentially because it changed the way um, learning was conceived. So, printing press that was invented in 1440 AD uh, by Gutenberg, as we saw, as we have learnt, it revolutionized reading as well as readership because it gave a boost to the ideas of enquiry. If you remember, we have discussed about the fact that people now could read the most important book, which was the Bible. So, they, they, they were learning not only about the church, but also about the society because now various books were being printed. So, we see then after a point of time, the, you know, the technological innovation or advancements did not really stop with the printing press. People kept thinking about how to sort of bring about a change in the technological field. And after a point of time, we then see when these series of technological changes happening in Europe. So, Europe moved quickly into a series of technological innovations that would ultimately revolutionize the world. So, this period of technological innovation, this, these series of technological innovations, that particular phase of time is known as the Industrial Revolution, right? But why are we exactly stating it as a revolution? What did it seek to revolutionize? So we see that this phase of industrial revolution was trying to sort of change the way people lived their lives. They were bringing in 
technological advancements, technological innovations um, that was related primarily to manufacture and production that would ultimately revolutionize the way production was done. So we see that the technological changes revolutionized the way people were living their lives. Now industrial revolution therefore this phase can be very well stated as the sort of first step towards modernization. So we can state that this phase of changes, technological changes that were taking place were the first steps towards modernization. Now, uh, you know, this particular phase that we are to read about, the industrial revolution or the period of change that we are to read about can be grouped together in a part of modern history. So we often read about it in the modern period of history and these revolutionary changes were happening in the field of technology which was known as industrial revolution. So, as we have seen that these technological advancements were taking place, of course, um, at one point of time, it was a phase as we have discussed. So, this phase, the series of technological movements or innovations were taking place between 1780 to 1850, which was, as we have seen, related to manufacture and production. Now, these affected people of the society in a way that you know production and manufacturing became much more easier primarily which was uh, without any sort of factories or homebound factories handmade products that process was rapidly changed so we see that various factories such as that of textiles iron parts are being produced at this point of time so ideally then this sort of push was given of course by the production of machines. So various invention of various machines that took place as you can see in this picture there are various machines that were being produced in this particular age that we are discussing about that revolutionized the, the process of production. So we see a large number of industries popping up very quickly at this point of time in a very short span of time that was facilitated by innovations and inventions in large scale which were happening in Europe and specifically in Britain. Now since these factories were coming up rapidly, the goods were being produced in a bulk and because of the inventions and innovations, the factories were coming up so rapidly that we can rightly state this age as the age of machines. And this phase, we can state it as the phase of first wave of industrialization that was happening in Britain. Now can you tell me where did the first wave of industrialization take place? Was it Italy, Genoa, USA or Britain? That is correct, it was Britain. So we see that in this age of machines that we are discussing about, Britain became the first country where all these factories were being established on a large scale basis. So it was not just one uh, you know, factory or two factories that were established. It was a massive amount of factories that were very quickly popping up as we saw. Now scientists of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, places and specifically in this period were focusing on um, experimentation and observations. They took to the laboratory. They were producing, um, you know, such inventions, such machines that could make the lives easier at that point of time.
so we see that um, you know as and when these inventions are happening very slowly and steadily of course human labor is now slowly being displaced so as we saw that you know the period that we are standing in the robots have almost taken over the human labor but during industrial revolution that was not the case the inventions were happening and they of course took some time but human labor was already uh, you know it, it it started to be sort of displaced a little now we see that with the machines and the factories coming up therefore labor slowly is being displaced now Previously, we have seen that people used to work in guilds and home-based industries. The problem with the home-based industries and the guilds was that the production process was slow and also the products that were produced were limited in number. Now, with the expansion of trade and high demand of goods, the merchants wanted to improve the process of production. And we see that with the coming of the factory system, the production is becoming coming large fast and unlike previous times when people used to work in guilds and home based industries now these home based industries were of course based on um, you know the products that were essentially handmade right and that of course took a lot of time it was uh, you know made in specific houses and specific guilds also so that idea that pattern of production small scale production changed right it changed into a factory production where a lot of machines are under one roof creating products in bulk so we see therefore that these factories such as the coal and iron industry factories or the mining industries were you know the backbone were the support to the developing industries or the factories as well of course mining would give them the ores iron ores and coal that they would require and these factories the iron and coal factories would create the parts that was required for various other machinery now as we then saw uh, from you know the home based factories the guilds uh, where handmade products were produced whether it is certain textile or uh, you know certain small product it changed this pattern of production changed in large scale factories and these large scale factories were primarily firstly cotton textile factories now when cotton textile factories were established these now could produce yarns in the factory so of course producing yarns by hand is far more sort of difficult and slow as a process than producing it um, through machines through a mechanical process now you can see how women were employed in these factories do you know why because the women were paid much less for their labor so thus we see and we have reached in a point of time when industries are taking over of course slowly and machines are being created through innovations and inventions which will ultimately sort of change the entire course of history not only the the course of history per se the way modern world will be shaped it will also depend on these innovations and inventions don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now